This is the night the Lord has made. And we will rejoice because we have a choice. The power to choose. Yes. You know, you have the power to lose yourself. And you don't have to look for it. Glory to God. <clears throat> Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, happy days. Isn't it wonderful to worship the Lord? I'm telling you, just to get in God's presence and get connected. Snap. Man, when we go home, <laughs> I can't even express it. Just hallelujah. You don't even get a chance to say hello. You go, hi, oh, worship the Lord. Glory, you know. Because the angels cruise around, everybody's going, glory, glory, praise the Lord. Hey, there's glory. <laughs> what are you going to do? Glory. It's all glory. Everything is glory. You don't need any conversations. Glory. Everybody knows what you're thinking anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3. We have been here, but we are returning. <laughs> but know this, everybody speak it, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? Amen. Hallelujah. It's amazing to me, you know, we're, they, you know our, our, our president is determined to protect our country and, our, his peop and the people he's in charge of. And here they've been chasing this guy that's been the head of the Antichrist system. <laughs> and they finally kill him. My heart hurts for the dude because he woke up in hell. You know, who knows what happened between his death and hell. I don't know. But there's a lot of blood on his hands. But he's been lied to his whole life. He was brought up by a demonic organization called Islam which is Antichrist. So he believed what he was doing. Saul was the same way before he became Paul. Amen? But now the country and all the Democrats, now they're all against him for killing this guy. But it was more than him. There was other individuals, leaders there. You know, you talk about perilous times. I put in a, in a Facebook, I, I said, you know, the word tells us about um, not to have any fellowship with darkness, but expose them. Well, they did. Amen. They not only exposed it, but they killed it. You know, think about it. Isn't, wasn't that Jesus' mission? Amen. I mean, look at what's going to happen at the end. He's going to expose them, and he's going to kill them. So... This isn't anything that Jesus wouldn't do. But in this, now they're in fear. But that's just all lies. I mean, that's just all lies. You know, what's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception and his power is what? Fear. So I put into Facebook, how, why, why would anyone vote for a person that fears evil and won't destroy it or expose it. We don't want leaders in our country that are going to try to bribe evil, pay them off. We want them to expose them and remove them. I'm telling you right now that Satan's agenda and military is in our own government. And they're in the left, demonic, libertarians, all of them. They're compromisers. We are battling tremendously, but the battle is in the spirit. That's how we win. That's why you can't quit 
in the area of battling in the spirit. You must stay connected because the moment you compromise, you are disconnected. And the enemy waits. Waits for that simple compromise. You know, people compromise. Let me share one thing. They compromise in their finances. If you go to a place and get fed, you should sow. A person that doesn't sow in a place they're getting fed is a compromiser. And you know what it is? They're cursed and don't know it. Why give other places? Where do you get fed? That's where you give. That's what God expects. He calls it his storehouse. That's where we give. There's nothing wrong with giving. But you give where God feeds you. Amen? He said, I'll give you the finest of wheat and honey. It's amazing to me, people don't sow in places they get fed because they compromise. That means there's a disconnect there because the Holy Spirit is definitely telling an individual to do that. It's amazing to me how many individuals are out there going to places they get fed and don't sow there. They just, because you know why? They're takers, they're not givers. They're pretenders. The reverence of God is not there because there's a disconnect. You know, one of the things I always remember is where I started from, where I got freed from. I'm always connected to that somehow, some way. Why? Because it'll help assist your, your freedom. Stay connected to the place where you got free from, it will assist your freedom. Oh, happy days. So we are in perilous times right now. And, and it says here from verse 2, for men will become lovers of who? Themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, hello. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, with unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Hmm. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. In other words, they're not overcomers. And from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. I want you to understand, look at this, let's go a little bit further because these individuals are corrupted. They're what we call corruptible spirits. Corruptible spirits. And we must deal with them immediately. In verse um, 6, For this sort are those who creep into households, make captives of gullible women and men, loaded down with what? Sins, led away by what? Various lusts. What's various lusts? Emotional idols. Always learning and never able to what? Come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because if you practice truth, you maintain freedom. You may know the truth, but you must live it, practice it, and love it. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the what? The truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds. If they have a corrupt mind, do they have the corrupt spirit? Yes. Disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Wow. And the Word tells us all the time, I was afflicted because I went astray. Going astray is a compromise. A simple compromise will cause tremendous damage. You compromise in your worship. You compromise in your word. You compromise in your tithing and giving. You compromise in anything in those areas. You compromise in your forgiveness. Will open the door. Remember, the enemy is always looking to an open door. Amen? So these are individual corrupt minds. 
They got to carry, they carry a corrupt spirit. They're dishonest, unclean, evil, wicked, lawlessness, rebellious, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. This is all associated with corruptible spirits. It says your love of money, fear, misleading, deception. They're liars, violent, murderers, homosexuals, lesbians, transgenders. Those are all corruptible spirits. Alcoholics, drug addicts, that's all corruptible spirits. Even the spirit of nicotine is a corruptible spirit. Pornography, all of these are corruptible spirits. They cause corruption in your life and in surrounding. It says here that they were manifested. Anything that is not manifesting the divine nature is a corruptible spirit. Does everybody get it? If the divine nature is not being manifested, you are carrying a corruptible spirit. Ephesians 5. seems to be approved and promoted by the world's view. They are promoting <laughs> and approving all kinds of corruption. Ephesians 5. Corruptible spirits. We know that every demon is a corruptible spirit, Amen. Well, you know, again, what is corruption? It's dishonest, isn't it? Even manipulation is corruption. Rebellion. Verse 1, Ephesians 5. Therefore, by you what? Imitators of God as dear children. In other words, divine nature. Divine nature. And walk in what? Love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. If he says it's not fitting, then what is he telling us? That there's corruption available to us. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous person is an, who is an idolater has any inheritance in the, in the kingdom of God, Christ and God. So if you are carrying corruption, you won't not enter in. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord in heaven. What? No fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. If you don't expose them, they will expose you. With what? Corruption. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil or corrupt. Listen, we live in a corrupt world. Amen? Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And look, at, don't be drunk with wine, and which is dissipation, but be filled with the what? Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Expose and remove. No compromise. No petting. We are to hate evil. We are to hate corruption. We're to love righteousness. And we're to hate lawlessness. 
Amen. Remember the days of evil. That means the days are corrupt. You will wake up in a corrupt world tomorrow. You will go to sleep in a corrupt world. The presence of the enemy is always going to come at you. But he can't touch this. Do, 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 do. If you're connected. Amen. If you're connected. If you have made, what's the word say? Make no place for the what? Devil. Devil. So does compromise make place for the devil? Yeah. Then there's a corruptible seed that comes. See, many times you don't even know the corruptible seed is there. It keeps getting watered, watered, watered. And you can go about, see, what begins to happen, it becomes a drift. Then there's a slight disconnect. Then that compromise gets a little bit bigger. What a person falls into is religion then. Because relationship is distance now. And there's two spirits that show up, familiar and deaf and dumb. Those spirits will show up quickly. And they imitate the Holy Spirit and they begin to convince, to continue the distance, even though they're going to tell you, you're okay. You're okay. Just read your Bible today. You're okay. Don't worry about that. You're okay. No. And then the scales begin to come back on. Those veils come on. And now you're becoming more blinded to the truth. And you're getting dumbed down. Now justification, reasoning, and compromise and grace. And the next thing you know, you've not only agreed with corruption, now you're touching unclean things. Remember, no one, I don't care how long you've walked with the Lord, I don't care who you are, we all get attacked the same way. Amen? It's our responsibility to make sure that we're pleasing God and staying connected and not playing religion. Amen? Ephesians chapter 2. Everybody there? Let's speak at verse 1. <clears throat> and you eat what? He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now, wait a minute. The course of this world is promoting what? Corruption. <coughs> according to the prince of the power of the air, he is the spirit of corruption. The spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or thoughts. And were by nature children of what? Wrath just as the others. <coughs> but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots out there, dead in trespasses, made us alive together, with Christ by grace. Remember, grace is what? God's plan to escape. No cooperation with the plan, no escape. By grace you've been saved and raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a what? A gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Amen? So grace is a gift from God. It's called a plan. What a gift. Here's a way out. Read the plan. It's real simple. Cooperate with the plan. So we go from corruption to cooperation. Does everybody get it? You go from what? Corruption to cooperation. When you begin to slide... From cooperation, you begin to compromise cooperation. What happens? You go back to what? Corruption. 
<clears throat> the prince of power of error is not only the Antichrist, but he's the spirit of corruption, promoting rebellion toward the creator and promoting us humans to become self-gods with selfish ambitions, loving the world and its delicacies. But God came with a plan, plan of escape, so that we can come out of corruption into cooperation. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound what? More and more. In other words, be connected more and more. In other words, get disconnected more so you can become connected. Amen? Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Your what? Sanctification. That's God's will. Your separation from the world. Your separation from corruption. That you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel and cell phone. <clears throat> That's the number one leader to corruption. That connection. People begin to worship their phones. Compromise from the enemy. Psh, psh, well, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. Yes, they're not unplugged from the world. They carry seeds of corruption, but I want to say hello. You may say goodbye. Oh, happy days. For each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and what? Honor. And what? Honor. Not in passion of lust, which is corruption, like the Gentiles who do not know God that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such, all as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to what? Uncleanness to but what? Holiness. Now, is uncleanness corruption? Yes. Therefore, he rejects, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who also give, has given us his what? Holy Spirit. Hmm. We are to be a vessel of sanctification and honor, rejecting all forms of corruption, but exposing it. Psalm 15. And you know what? <clears throat> you know what corruption is. You don't need a list to check. Let me see. If you got to check a list, you've already compromised. Because what you're doing, not even realizing, you're looking for an excuse for corruption. Well, let me put my list of corruption out. Hold on a minute. <laughs> well, let me call someone. That way I can use the phone, too. Yo, you think this is corruption? Oh, wrong number. <laughs> Psalm 15. Let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, which means his presence, or who may dwell in your holy hill. Here he is. Here's the guideline. He who walks what? Uprightly. Who works? Righteousness. So when you work out your salvation, you're actually working righteousness. In other words, you're practicing it. You're rejecting lawlessness and you're practicing righteousness. 
and speaks the truth in his heart. Hello, he doesn't compromise, doesn't lie to himself, doesn't make excuses. Is not in the but ministry. But, but, but. Amen? Which we know is nothing but a moped, right? And me, me, me is a rice burner, right? And a Harley is what? Come out, come out, come out. Okay, so we got that down. He who walks uprightly and practices righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, he doesn't lie to himself. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. In other words, to despise someone doesn't mean to hate someone. It means that you don't want to touch anything that they're involved in. But he honors those who what? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. You want, to, you want to associate with people that are on fire for God. Amen? You want, to, you want to associate with people that they hate corruption. They want to avoid anything that's unclean. Whose eyes a vile person is despised, who honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't what? change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. You won't be moved to touch corruption. You won't be moved to agree with it. Amen? We are to be vessels of honor and sanctification. We must maintain direct contact the Lord in all, all things. That's why the word says, we set him before us. That's our responsibility. Lord, I set you before me today. I purposely set you before me. Show me which way I'm supposed to go. Allow my eyes to see you. You know, I always look at Jesus when he was on the cross. It's going, you can turn left or you can turn right. Or you can go straight. Remember, the cross overshadows us. We have been born from the cross, given the Spirit so we can go. Why? Because through the blood first. What a price of exchange. We're not to be moved from the connection of His presence and truth and love. Maintaining the fear of the Lord is essential. And you can't do that without God's presence. Psalm 36. Psalm 36 and verse 1. Everybody okay? Let's speak it. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is what? No fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes. <laughs> in other words, he's lying to himself. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are what? Wicked and deceit. That means he's carrying corruptible seeds always. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He, he devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. He does not hate evil. There's no fear of God. Flatters himself. These are individuals that are easily offended. <clears throat> they lie to themselves. They're disconnected in many ways. And they forget their foundational training. See, when things begin to struggle in your life, sometimes you have to go back to your foundation and make sure it's clean. If your foundation isn't clean, then there's something that you need to take care of. If there's bitterness or unforgiveness there, 
if there's corruptible seeds, if there's cracks or contamination in your foundation, if there's compromise in your foundation, you need to clean it up because it's going to crumble. But that takes self-examination, doesn't it? Second Peter chapter 2. When the word represents wickedness, it means that they carry an evil agenda. Wickedness always carries an evil agenda to promote corruption. Second Peter chapter 2. You know, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit... Um, he, he brings things more to a light arena. In other words, he begins to uh, peel. Peel things so that we can see it better. So we can understand it better. So that we are warned. And so that we may bring a self-examination to ourself so that we can remove anything that can be corruptible, contaminate. Again, being honest with yourself is the number one thing, because if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with God. And can you trust someone that don't trust you? No. He's the same way. In verse, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, But there were also what? False prophets among the people, even as there will be what? False teachers. Are they corrupted? Yes. So a false prophet and a false teacher is going to release corruptible seed. Among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and brought on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be what? blaspheme by covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time their judgment has not has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber for if god did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them to chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved noah one of eight people a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them as an example to those who afterward would live what? Ungodly. So let me ask you this. Did God search out evil and destroy it? Yes. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the what? Flesh in the lust of, of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and what? Destroyed. Hello. Caught and what? Destroyed. See, if these senators and congressmen would read the Bible, even though they say they pray but they lie, Oh, I'm praying for him. Oh, you're a stinking liar. They need to pray for themselves. But these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own what? And their own what? Corruption. And will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. 
They have a heart trained in covetousness practices and are what? Accursed children. Prophets, teachers. They are slaves of corruption. It says that they have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Barar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water clouds, carried by tempests, for whom is res reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from these, from those who live in here. While they promise them what? Liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him also is brought into bondage. Wow. For if after they've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the first in the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happens to them, according to a true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in mire. Again, there is teachers, preachers, even preachers, amen, that are planting corruption. You got the news media that plants corruption. It's all lies. And so many people absorb it. I'm telling you, they're like corruptible shop, shopping bags. They just, they're, they're so full of corruptible seeds, they don't even realize it. Romans 8. Romans 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Flesh of corruption. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? You will die. That's plain and simple, isn't it? So living according to the flesh is living according to corruption. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. How many of y'all know that your flesh is corruption? It was born in corruption. Your old man is corrupt. Unfortunately, you sleep with them and you got to carry it around wherever you go. But it's to be behind you, not in front of you. Jesus should be before you, not you. Yeah. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But we're to put to death the deeds of the body. That's corrupt. You will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified with him. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the what? Bondage of corruption. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. It can't be delivered to us until we're out of corruption. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with the birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even our, we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body.
body. In other words, no longer corrupt body. Glorified. Hallelujah. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not or do not have seen, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. That means endurance. No matter what. It's a flesh of corruption. It's the spirit of bondage. It is corruption. Hallelujah. Uh, Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6. Is everybody, <clears throat> everybody there? In verse 7. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Do not be what? deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows he's going to reap. I mean, how do, you, how do you get out of everything? Sow your way out. Amen? He who sows to his flesh will reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't what? Lose heart. In other words, if we don't stop sowing in the Spirit. <laughs> that, that's the bottom line. You must sow your way out of everything. That's how we get it out of it. Sow to the flesh, reap corruption. Hallelujah. Galatians 3. That's why the word says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Galatians 3. Only the followers of Jesus will sow their way out of the matrix of corruption. Because they've come from corruption to cooperation. The moment you compromise cooperation, you slide back into corruption. Verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has what? Bewitched you. Who has, who told you that? <laughs> Who has bewitched you that you should not obey or follow the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ, who was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? He's very kind here. He really wanted to say, are you so stupid? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh of corruption? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In all in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Hallelujah. Bewitched. You know, the word says, as a man thinks, so he is. See, one of the things that begins to happen is you're no longer monitoring your thoughts. Just one acceptance, one compromise, the corruptible seed is planted, not even realizing it's been planted. 
And then the enemy waters it. And sometimes you don't even know he's watering it. That just thought just flows through. Oh, huh. just got watered, just got watered, just got watered, just got watered. Until it's now grabbing hold. The next thing you're in a place where you thought, how did I get there? How did I get offended? Why am I saying things I shouldn't say? Why am I reacting? It's not even about going out and using. You've already fallen before you did that. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Bewitched as a man thinks, so he will become falling from the faith into doctrines of demons, seducing spirits. Amen? These are spirits of corruption. They want to put us under control again, under evil. So that your flesh is ruling your life. You're no longer living out of the spirit. You're living out of the soul. See, many people can recognize the flesh, but sometimes they can't recognize the soul. They know when they react, but they don't know when they become emotional. Emotional idols are very difficult. We must constantly beat those down. And cut ourselves loose from them all the time. Second Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians 2 in verse 5. Is everybody there? Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. If he's a mystery of lawlessness, it means a mystery of corruption. It's already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's us. The body of Christ that is here is holding back. And then when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one, or the coming of the corrupt one, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. You think a lot of people are going to fall to that? Yes. Many will. Because they're not connected. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you brethren. Beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. You see those two things? Sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. In other words, separated and following. That takes what? Cooperation. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand what? Fast. Hold the traditions which you were taught whether by word or by epistle. Hold fast. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and the Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. 1 John chapter 3. Corruptible spirits. That's why the word says test all spirits. Test them. Don't shake their hand and welcome them in. Test them. You know, it's, that's why they have peepholes on doors. Use your spiritual peephole. Hallelujah. Anyone 
when they knock, don't say who's there. Look through the peephole first. First John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. In other words, that's corruption, right? And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not cooperate with corruption. <laughs> Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. You know, again, when a person is deceived, they get corrupted. So he's saying, don't let anybody corrupt you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Don't let CNN corrupt you. Don't let NSNBC corrupt you. Don't let a Democrat corrupt you. Hello? They're corrupted. Socialism, communism, Nazism, and libertarian is all corruption. Hallelujah. I won't get going on all that. <laughs> uh, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, or he who practices corruption is of the devil. He who promotes corruption is of the devil. Who promotes abortion is of the devil. Who promotes perversion is of the devil. It's simple. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In other words, he hates. Again, you'll know this drip. Remember, there's a difference between saved and born again. You can fall from a born again state of being to a saved. Why? Because everything revolves around the three chambers of the tabernacle of God. Amen? You can slide right from one place right out and then go right out to outer court. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go to 1 Peter first. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, happy days. First Pete 1, 22. Everybody there? Since you have what? Purified your souls in what? Obeying. Obeying. Obeying the what? Truth. Through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is grass, and all glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the Word by which the gospel was preached to you. I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 15. Corruptible spirits. Remember, they cause corruption. In verse 50, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Everybody there? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Are you ready? Nor does what? Corruption. Inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be what? Changed. It's called the rapture. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. In other words, your fight is not in vain. Amen? Our fight. We are fighting against all these spirits of corruption. But we must do a self-examination every day. Disconnect to connect. Amen? Stay filled, dressed, and possessed. With the Spirit. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Hallelujah. And we ask that the seed of righteousness, the seed of incorruption, <laughs> incorruptible seed, would grow and bear fruit for your glory and penetrate every area of our life, of our thoughts, our desires, our decisions, our motives and attitudes. Our health, our finances, our ministries, our businesses, and everything that we do. Let it bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed. For the Lord.